Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making fried taters and onions. And for our viewers north of the Mason-Dixon line and on the other side of the world, taters are also known as potatoes. <laughs> Okay, I like to use either Yukon Gold or Red Skin Potatoes when I'm making fried taters. And you can use either or both, and I have both here. You want to make sure you wash them really, really good first or your fried taters will taste dirty. And you want to cut them up. You can cut them however you like, but I like mine sliced thin and kind of cut into small pieces. Now, I like the red skins and the Yukon Gold because you don't have to peel them. But like I said, you do want to make sure you wash them really, really good. And I also like them because they don't get mushy like um, a russet potato would when you fry it. And they tend not to stick quite as bad as a russet potato does. They get brown and crispy instead of mushy and stuck. And that's important, especially if you're making taters and onions, because the onions will also cause them to stick if you're not real, real careful. Now, a lot of people think that fried taters are unhealthy. And it's true that heart attacks are plentiful in the South because we eat everything fried. But we have a greater selection of oils these days than what we used to have. And you can make healthier choices without sacrificing taste and without sacrificing the fried foods that you love. I'm using grapeseed oil to make these today. And I am making them in my iron skillet. But I do want to say that the manufacturers of glass top stoves do not recommend you use an iron skillet on them. And there's two reasons why they don't recommend it. It's because the iron skillet is heavy and if you just bump your stove top the wrong way you could crack your stove top. So if you have a glass stove top you might want to think twice about using an iron skillet. Also the iron skillet is not smooth on the bottom like a pressed aluminum pan would be you know like you find in your non-stick and stuff and if I slide this around it will scratch the stove top and you can see I didn't use a ton of oil in here I just coated the bottom real good and I may have to add a little more as my taters start cooking if I do I will but this grapeseed oil is loaded with omega-3s and omega-6s it doesn't have any saturated fat in it. it has a lot of vitamin E in it and I really like the way it tastes better for fried taters than um, like Crisco or something like that. It's not as heavy and they're not as greasy tasting when you make them. Now you want to let this oil preheat until it starts to separate kind of. You can see the oil, oil start to move in the pan. It's not actually going to boil. But you want it really hot before you dump your taters in. And we're not going to add our onions until our taters have started cooking. So we'll give that just a minute to preheat. And if you're not sure exactly what it looks like when it's preheated, you can take just a piece of your tater and you can drop it in and it'll start to get little bubbles around it when the oil gets hot. You know, the world is a pretty scary place. And I suppose it always has been. I grew up during the Cold War and we were worried about them Russians dropping a bomb on us. 
But today, it seems like there are more doomsday theories going around than there are taters in the world. I mean, you've got everything from a super volcano in Yellowstone to meteor strikes to the government releasing a plague on us, martial law, terrorists releasing a plague on us, or dirty bombs, or it just goes on and on and on and on. A super bug just popping up somewhere. And you can absolutely worry yourself to death about this stuff. But if you're worried about the world ending, you might want to think about the fact that every two seconds, somebody in the world dies. And none of us know when our two seconds are going to be. So you might ask yourself, in this world full of worry and not knowing when your two seconds is going to pop up and you're going to be the next person, how in the world do we stop worrying? How do we get some peace? Well, the Bible says that we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when you have peace with God, that means that you know that in the end, everything's going to be all right. If the end comes in two seconds, or if it comes after a 10-year tribulation, or if it comes after the super volcano in Yellowstone erupts and we're all starving to death because it blocks out the sun. Whenever the end comes, however the end comes, if an engine falls off of a jet as it's going over the house and it falls through the roof and hits you in the head, you know that you're going to be okay if you have peace with God. Now, if you don't know how to find peace with God, it's pretty simple. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus said, I come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So it's not just everlasting life. Eternity is taken care of. But Jesus said that we can have an abundant life while we're here. And that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, that you're going to be driving around in a Mercedes and you're going to be living in a big mansion or whatever. It means that your life is going to be full. You will have people who love you. You will have the, need, the things that you need in life. And God does provide. So, if you don't know how to get that peace, and if you're one of those people who are, is worried and would like to, the first thing you have to do is you have to know that you're a sinner and you have to admit it and that's pretty easy because unless you were born of a virgin in the Holy Ghost you're just like all the rest of us and you are a sinner the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God so knowing you're a sinner is pretty simple you have to admit that to God and you have to ask for his forgiveness and you have to be willing to turn away from those sins. Now, that's hard sometimes because a lot of us want to believe that what we're doing that the Bible calls sin is not really sin. It's not really what God meant. But he's actually pretty clear. Now, you can see here that we have bubbles around our one tater that we have dropped in there. So I am going to very carefully dump all the rest of our taters in. And I'm going to add salt and pepper. And this is to taste, but I like plenty. And I'll salt and pepper them a couple more times when I stir them. And we're going to cover them with the lid for a few minutes. Now, you want to keep an eye on your taters, and you're going to come back and you're going to stir them every few minutes while they're cooking. But we'll give them a minute there with the lid on them and then we'll check on them. So, once you know that you're a sinner and your conscience will tell you the, the things that you are doing that is wrong and you can read your Bible and you can see the things that you're doing. You can't change the things that the Bible says are sins to make yourself a good person. 
none of us are really good people. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, once you come to that realization and once you have studied the Bible and you know what your sins are or once you've listened to your conscience and your conscience has told you, have told you what your sins are, you have to be willing to turn away from those sins to repent. Because there is no salvation without repentance. The Bible says that all through it, you have to repent. So you have to know that you're a sinner and admit it. You have to be willing to repent from your sins. And trust me, they're there. And then you have to simply ask God to forgive you. You have to believe that Jesus Christ is his son, that he died on a cross for you, that he died for you while you were still a sinner to save you, the righteous for the unrighteous. That's what the Bible says. And that God rose him again from the dead. And then you have to tell people that you've done that, that you believe that Jesus is your Lord, that you believe that Jesus died for you. And it's just that simple to find peace in this very scary world, to know that you're going to be okay no matter how bad things get or no matter what fate befalls the world because the fact is something is going to happen the world is going to end and in the next two seconds it's going to end for another person so you know it's not that hard just admit it believe it ask and confess it oh. while our taters are cooking there we're going to chop up our onion now there are a few things about chopping an onion to keep you from crying if you store your onions in the refrigerator and they're cold you won't cry as much when you cut them and if you store them whole in a plastic bag you know not uncut once you cut them it's really hard to store them without stinking up your refrigerator but if they're not cut and you put them in a plastic bag as if like bag or something they won't stink up your refrigerator real bad. So, keep them in the refrigerator and get them cold. Even if you don't keep them in the refrigerator, if you know you're going to have to chop onions for something like taters and onions, put you one in there a couple hours before you're going to cut it up and get it cold. And you won't cry as bad. And the other thing is that when you cut this end, the back end here it releases a lot of the juice so anytime you cut it you're going to be more likely to cry so when you're actually chopping the onion cut it lengthways from the front or the top of the onion toward that back don't cut all the way through and you can cut it as fine as you want if you're doing it this way you just make your um, cuts closer together or you can cut it more coarse I do like it kind of fine when I'm cooking fried taters and onions then you turn it and you cut the other direction and I haven't cut that in so I'm not getting a lot of juice and I'm not crying see my end is still intact there When you stir your potatoes, you want to make sure that you get your spatula all the way down on the bottom of your pan so that you get any that are sticking to the bottom of the pan off. That way you don't end up with really bad burn places and all your potatoes don't end up stuck to the bottom of the pan. If you don't scrape them off the bottom every single time you stir them, you won't get brown potatoes, you'll just have burn stuff in the bottom of your pan that's impossible to clean. And you can see in here I don't have an overabundance of oil, but the bottom of the pan is still coated good. And I've stirred the potatoes up really good. So it looks like I've got enough. All the potatoes are coated now. 
But if they start, if the bottom of the pan starts to look totally dry as I'm cooking them, I will add a little more oil. And now that I've stirred them, I'm going to add a little more salt and pepper. And I'm going to put the lid back on for just like another, you know, four or five minutes, which is about how long they were cooking before I stirred them the first time. And at that point, we'll add our onions when we check on them next time. Okay, our taters have been cooking for about a total of 10 minutes now. Five minutes the first time we stirred them and another five minutes. And in case I forgot, I have these cooking on medium heat. Okay, make sure you get the bottom of your pan scraped good again. Every time you check on them, you want to make sure you scrape the bottom of your pan really well because you don't want just the bottom to burn. They are already starting to get done, but they're not really browning yet, and that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and um, add my onions. I always make sure I wipe my stove up really good before I start making fried taters because I always knock a few out when I'm stirring them like I did there just a second ago. So it's okay to put them back in the pan if you knock a couple out when you're stirring them. Add a little salt and pepper to your onions. It'll bring out the flavor. If I didn't pick up the ones I knocked out when I was stirring them, I wouldn't have any left when I got done. And we're going to cover them again with the lid for about another five minutes to start cooking those onions. And then when we check on them next time, we're going to take the lid off. Okay, our onions have been in mm, about five or six minutes. We're going to stir the taters again. And at this point, that handle is getting hot. They are starting to brown, but I'm going to leave the lid off of them now, and they'll really brown fast. Make sure you get that bottom scraped good. Now, it is much easier to make your taters in a no-stick skillet. And it's perfectly fine, but every once in a while, I like to drag out the cast iron skillet. Because they do taste a little different. Okay, now we're just going to leave the lid off, and we're going to let them cook a while, and keep an eye on them, and get the rest of dinner ready to serve. Okay, you can see here that my pan is really getting dry now. I have stirred the potatoes a couple times since I added the oil, and they're almost done, but they're not really brown like I want them. So I'm going to add a little more oil so that they will fry better and they'll brown more. Not much. Um, probably about two tablespoons is all I'm putting in here. And I probably started with a little less than a quarter of a cup. Alright, see that right there? That's what I'm looking for. That nice brown, just before it gets burned, crispy taters. And I'm going to serve that up with some fresh cucumber and cherry tomatoes. A little corn and to make it a complete hillbilly feast I've got pinto beans and a big slab of cornbread here now you can find videos on our channel for the pinto beans and the cornbread so you can make you a hillbilly feast too Now this right here, folks, 
is what you make when you got people coming over that you really like. So next time you got folks coming that you want to make something that they won't soon forget, fix you some fried taters and onions and pinto beans, and cornbread, corn, get some fresh vegetables and cut them up and enjoy because that'll be a meal they won't soon forget. Thanks for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.